So today I think it's time to ask some real questions. And, and one of the questions we're going to ask today is, can you really tell the difference between an MS-61 and say an MS-62 Morgan or between an MS-62 and an MS-63 or even at that point an MS-63 and an MS-64? Those are the real questions that we have today and we're going to go over that and we're going to look at all four of these. Now these are all from the same exact mint in the same exact year. These are all 1884 Carson cities. These are PCGS certified. So all certified by the same certification company as well. And what we're going to do is take some very up close images of these. We're going to put them up on the screen so you can see them as closely as I can see them. And we're going to talk about what the difference is between each one of these grades and can you tell the difference between each one of these grades up close without knowing which is which. Now I do realize that if you study these coins before we show them under the camera, uh, you can probably recognize some of the scratches that you're going to see on the images, but don't do that. Let's go ahead and have some fun and see if you can tell the difference. Let's take a look at each one of these coins really quickly, uh, up close and personal, and see if you can tell which one is which. And if we can figure out why, for example, this one was a 61 and this one was a 62. So let's go, let's get into that. Okay, so up first is this one here. Now you decide yourself, I'm not gonna quiz you, but decide yourself which one you think this is. Let's take a look at the features. Uh, you can see there are some pretty significant scratches right behind the hairline at the bottom of the cap on the reverse. Uh, you can also see that we have a really cool die crack going on right there. There's this huge like circular scrape going on on that side of the obverse of the coin as well. And if you look right here, you can actually see where the coin was hit with another coin. There's a significant amount of scraping on the face as well as above the eye. And then if we take a look at the reverse, which we can now see over here in full glory, uh, you can see that there is a die clash right there. That's a die clash mark. Uh, you can see a little bit of scraping. There's a major hit right here, a little bit of scratching down here, and a hit at the tip of, or the back of this arrow as well as a hit right there. So that is our first one. Let's take a look at the next one though. Okay, looking at our second one, you can see behind the cap, there's a pretty significant gouge. Uh, you can see a lot of scraping on the face. You can see a lot of damage on the neck here as well. Uh, you can also see that scraping in the field. Also, although notably, if you look at the field, it's actually a very beautiful field on this beautiful coin. Uh, there's a little bit of a die crack here, but not near as bad as on the one we just looked at. However, if you look down here, there's a major die crack going on down there around the stars and around 1884. Let's take a look at the reverse of this one really quick. Uh, you can see that the reverse is a nice looking coin. There's not near as many hits as the previous one that we looked at, but you can see some significant scraping. And if you look right here, you see these three marks. That does look like a coin actually hit the center of the breast. So that looks like possibly another Morgan hit the center of that breast right there as it was being thrown into the bag. Uh, there's a little bit of scraping outside of that, but kind of like the obverse of, the coin, of this coin, it has a very beautiful field. So which one do you think this is? Okay, next up, uh, this one right here, uh, you can see a lot of chatter and scratching going on behind the head, behind the cap. Uh, you can see a little bit of scraping right here. Now I can confirm that that scraping is on the coin. It's not on the holder. Uh, you also have a bit of scraping up here. We have a pretty major die crack going on between E and P of E pluribus and then around the top of E pluribus as well. Uh, you can see a lot of chatter on the face on this one as well. If we take a look at the reverse of this coin right here, you can see the reverse actually has really nice looking fields, which I am quite impressed about. It also has that same die clash that we saw earlier. Uh, but outside of that, it's actually a really nice reverse. Nothing really major to look at. A couple of hits here, uh, a couple of scrapes here. Nothing major though. Very nice reverse on this one. Which one do you think it is? Okay, and the final one we're going to look at today, guys. Uh, you can see there's a little bit going on here as far as what looks like a possible die crack. Not much behind the head. Uh, there is this significant scraping right here. It looks like the edge of a coin that kind of gouged into her chin. Uh, however, in the field, there's not a whole lot of scraping on the outside. Uh, you do see a little bit of darkness around the 8 and the 4 right there. Uh, but other than that, it's a pretty decent looking coin. It doesn't, it doesn't have the field quite as nice as another one we saw. However, if you look, the scrapes aren't near as bad. The scratching's not near as bad. However, the field is not as good as one that we saw previously. Now, if we look at the reverse, however, of this one, uh, the field on the reverse of this coin is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of gouging or scraping going on up here. And then there's one scrape right here across the center of the breast. Outside of that, you don't really see much. I mean, maybe a little bit of circular scraping right here. And, uh, oh, this gouge right here, I did miss that. So pay attention to that as well. So which one do you think this is? 
And guys, if you want, go ahead and put them in order in a comment and let me know what your thought was. Now, obviously, I'm not going to quiz you. And of course, you can delete your comment and change it to make you look more right. That's not what this is about. Just let me know what you thought, if you can tell the difference between the 61, the 2, the 3, and the 4. Okay, so let's get started, guys. We're going to start off with the MS-61. Again, this is the one that had the major chatter behind the headpiece right there. Uh, you can see a little bit of the scraping there. The field on this one is not really nice, which is probably why it's an MS-61. It does have a really cool die crack, though. And then, of course, as is actually pretty common uh, with this die, there's the die clash right there. Um, but, you know, this one right here is our MS-61. Is that what you thought it is? Again, you know, in your comment, let me know. Um, let's compare that to the MS-62. So here is our MS-62, and we want to take a look at this. In fact, why don't we go ahead and turn off the reverses, and we'll just do the side-by-side -side of the two obverses. Okay, so here they are side-by-side, -side, the MS-62 on the left, the MS-61 on the right. So if you look at the MS-61, it does have quite a bit of chatter going on behind the head. In fact, let's put that above this one just so we can see the whole coin. Um, however, not so much chatter in the front of the field, and the face doesn't look as bad. Outside of the scraping right here, it's really not too horrible. Now, if we look at our MS-62, on the other hand, uh, this one right here, of course, you can see there's major scraping on the face. But this right here, this circular scratch right here, does make me question why this one didn't get, also get a 61. Because if you look at our MS-61, it doesn't have that at all. I mean, there's a little bit of scraping, but nothing near as bad as what's on that one. So I do kind of question why one's a 61 and one's a 62. Now, to me, it's clear as day why neither of these made 63. But I do question why one's a 61 and one's a 62 in this case. And looking at the reverses of these, we could show you the reverses. In fact, we can turn them on. But is as typical with Morgan Silver Dollars, the reverse is always nicer. I mean, I, I can't say always, always, but the reverse is generally nicer. I don't know why that is, but the reverse is generally a nicer coin. So as you can see, uh, they both look really nice. Now let's take a look at our MS-63. Okay, guys, so here's the MS-63. Did you guess it correctly? Let's take a look at why. So this MS-63 doesn't really have a whole lot as far as, you know, scratching behind the head or chatter in front of the face or even on the cheek. Uh, it looks significantly better than the scratching that we saw on the MS-62 and the MS-61. The only thing this really has negative going for it, and actually, in my opinion, the only reason that this one did not make an MS-64 is because of this hit right here. This does look like the reeded edge or maybe the dentals, like these here, of another coin scraping or gouging into her cheek. But other than that, it doesn't look bad at all. Now, you may have known that this one was the MS-63 when we were looking at them, because if you look at the 84, uh, it does look like something stained those dates. I don't know why that is. Uh, this isn't a PCGS holder. I don't know if something just got on them or what that is, but uh, that was a pretty dead giveaway if you were paying attention to the coins early. Taking a look at the reverse, the coin is absolutely gorgeous on the reverse. There's really nothing that can really be said about it. I mean, maybe that, that, the hit right here and the hit right there, and that's about it. It's overall, it's a pretty gorgeous coin. Uh, as, like I said, is the norm, the reverse is almost always better than the obverse. Okay, guys, here is our MS-64. Did you catch it? I don't know. Let's take a look. So looking at the MS-64, you can see pretty significant scraping behind the head, uh, pretty significant scraping on the cap, uh, going along the hairline above the ear and onto the ear, as well as down the face. None of this is on the holder. This is all on the coin. There's a significant amount of chatter on the cheek and a significant amount of chatter in front of the head, as well as on top of the stars and on top of Ian Pluribus. Uh, taking a look at the reverse, you can also see it has that same scraping. Now, these were taken under the same, with the same camera under the same lighting conditions. It's just that these scrapes come out more on camera because they are much more reflective. So there's actually luster showing where these scrapes are, and so they're coming out as a darker color, but they're very noticeable, and it is very clear that there's more scraping on the MS-64 than there is on the MS-63. So why is this an MS-64, and why is the MS-63 a 63? Well, obviously, I didn't grade these coins, so I can't tell you for sure, but what I will note is that although the MS-64 does appear to have a lot more scraping, the field and the luster of the MS-64 is just much more vibrant. If you look at the, re the background of the 64, and even on the foreground so much, it has that very beautiful, lustrous sheen to it uh, that even on the 63, you just can't see near as clearly. So I do believe that with the MS-64, the obverse, that lustrous sheen that you're seeing really does kind of bring out the scrapes a little more. It makes them appear a little bit 
more apparent under a camera. Um, however, I can see, at least in my opinion, why the MS-64 got a 64. It has a very, very beautiful luster. And although, again, the scraping is there, and you can see it, if you tilt this coin in the light, holding it in your hand, it looks just like this. I think just because of the field and the luster, I think this is just a nicer coin overall than the 63. But that's, again, my opinion. Any day, and I do mean this, any day this could have been swapped. And I think a grader, you know, depending on how they were looking at the coin, may have called this one a 64 and the one on the left a 63. And I think sometimes that's really the apparent problem with grading is it's all opinion and it's all it's educated opinion, but it's opinion nonetheless. So let's take a look at our 61 versus our 64, though. These are the two most stark grade differences that we have. And we'll go ahead and move these so you can kind of see both of them. If you look at the 64's fields, it has a very, again, beautiful, lustrous field. Whereas if you look at the 84, the MS-61, I should say, it doesn't look like it's been cleaned, but it almost looks like it may have been cleaned compared to the MS-64. That's not actually the case, of course, but I just, I think, again, the luster and the re the background of the MS-64 is what gives it that grade. And then, of course, on the 61, there's just a lot more going on here. You know, there's a lot going on with that coin. So anyway, there are the differences between those. Now let's go ahead and compare the 64 versus one more thing. Okay, now what we're looking at is an MS-64 on the left versus an 1883 Carson City MS-66 on your right. Now I do want to point out that on the 66, these little scratches right here, you would think that they're probably on the holder. I can assure you they are not. I looked at it myself under a loop. I tilted it. You could see that those scrapes are actually on the face of the coin. I don't know where they came from. Uh, it doesn't even look like another coin hit it. It almost looks like something abrasive hit it. Um, however, outside of that, this is a very, very beautiful coin, and you can tell why this is a 66 versus this being a 64. At least I can. So what do you think? Let me know down in the description of the video what do you think about these different grades. Which ones do you think are undergraded or overgraded? Which order do you think they should be in? Should the MS-61 be a 62? Should the 63 be a 64? Should the 64 be a 63? Do you think the MS-66 should be a 66 with these face scrapes? I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. So let me know in the comments below, guys. I'll look forward to seeing them, and we will see you in the very next video. Do me a favor, by the way, if you haven't done so yet, and if you want to see more videos like these, make sure you hit that like and make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time.